Prepare yourself to be blown away by the seismic sounds and scrutiny of... After Shots Podcast with Chris Aiken and Matt Hartnett. All right, well, here we go, Aftershocks, episode number eight, and today our guest is a veteran vocalist in the New York hardcore scene, and he's known as the frontman for New York hardcore titans full-blown chaos, as well as his current band, Brick by Brick, and this guy has also been rocking that beard, man, way before it became popular to do so, especially in the New York hardcore scene, Mr. Ray Mazzola, who's coming to us from the great state of Texas. What's happening, Ray, man? How are, uh, how are things going down there with all this pandemic stuff? Are you going stir-crazy yet or what? You know, um, I've, I was stir-crazy within the first week. So it pretty much, I, I, the way it is here, you know, it's, uh, man, for years, I, you know, I haven't been in the same, in one place for longer than a couple of weeks at a time. Mm-hmm. And I've been quarantined now for fuck uh man like maybe uh, almost two months now like definitely i hit the 60 day mark so but it's you know i mean that's one of those things it just you gotta you gotta keep safe right it's sure. you really i'm uh i you know between having uh you know uh lyme disease and some other shit you know medical shit it's like my immune system shot sure wow. so there's you know, it's better off to not, you know, I got family that, you know, which is why I'm down in Texas, you know, with them, but, uh, got family down here that, you know, they're compromised also immunely. So it's, you know, immune compromise and stuff. So it just, it works out better to not even risk it. Sure. Being Mm -hmm. that, you know, everything's shut down, music still shut down. You know, you can't do shows. You can't, work in bars you can't fucking you know they do anything yeah. it's yeah. it's stupid and i know everybody's getting uh you know everybody's getting antsy everybody wants to fucking do their thing and get and it's it's a dumb idea you know like everybody's just like hey let's i mean there's i've lost a lot of friends because they think this whole shit is just made up still mm-hmm. which you know i mean the I, people are crazy so i don't know what to fucking what to think? So. Well, yeah, but if you got like like yeah, you said Lyme disease and some other like pre-existing stuff, man. Obviously, you gotta take you care of yourself and be safe, man. No doubt, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, sure. that's really the only. You know, you have to. You know, I'm an old man now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, I ain't getting sure. any fucking. Uh, I ain't getting any younger. So sure, man. It's yeah. uh, but that's uh, you know, it is what it is, and uh, you know, it's not like uh, things are gonna get fucking. If I, my rule of thumb is, you know, it's got to get worse before it gets, gets better. better. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Totally, man. No, I hear you, man. Well, shit, man. Well, thanks for coming on, man. And, well, let's talk a little bit here about uh, Hive Mentality, man. The uh, latest Brick by Brick record, man. It's a great fucking record. Really brutal. I mean, I love it, man. You got some great guest appearances on there, too. You, you do a couple of... Uh, Covers you do a Motorhead cover and a Skid Row cover and uh, my favorite song on a record man that I love is is Bar is Open I think that basically is a great like overall it sort of signifies what your band's about man and you know it features Tony from Municipal Waste man how did you guys uh, get together with him and collaborate on that uh, you know we uh, we were like hey let's you know when the band was together you know like Mike and I we collaborate a lot on ideas. And uh, Mike Valeni, our, our guitarist, mm-hmm. and pretty much we, you know, we were like, hey, you know, let's put a little more thrash influence on some of these songs. Let's get some a little, you know, let, let's let's see what what we can uh, what we could pull off. Mm-hmm. And the song, like lyrically, you know, Mike came up with a couple of riffs, and boom, I was like, wow, all right. Lyrically, the song was done in five minutes. You know, <laughs> like it just it when when a song feels right, it mm-hmm. just comes, and that's it. You know, and I, I get it down, and it was, it it was there because we've been saying "bar is open." That's been our, our moniker, I guess, for, forever. You know, mm-hmm. we walk into a club, and even though, like, let's say, you know what, the show might be shot. You know, the crowd might not be into it, or this and that. We're still gonna fucking have a great time. We're gonna party. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you know, we look at each other. We're like, "bar is open." You know, mm-hmm. we're gonna go fucking. <laughs> go have ourselves a good time. You know, we're going to get hammered. We're going to get everybody else hammered. 
And that's, you know, even if you don't drink, you feel like you did mm. by the time we're done with you. So, <laughs> you know, and that's, yeah. that's like a thing that we do in, you know, municipal waste and, you know, Iron Reagan, they, they're, they know, they're known for partying sure. and we know Tony for, uh, for a while now, you know, we're friends with the bands we've toured with Iron Reagan. So it's, you know, we all, we all knew each other. And so it just worked out. We're like, yeah, let's get him on a song. And he was all about it. He read the lyrics and he was like, this is great. Mm -hmm. So it just, it just worked out. We're like, we need, uh, you know, uh, a party champion. So uh, nice. And he was available. <laughs> Fuck yeah, man. And you also got a, another really cool guest too on there on, on the title track, the hive mentality. You got uh, actress, Jessica Pimentel from orange is the new black. I mean, how did that come back? I know she, she's uh she's a big metalhead. I know. Uh, I think she sings for a band too, right? I think. Yeah, she she sang for uh, multiple projects. Uh, she was doing stuff with Bruharia for a while. She mm -hmm. sang for uh, EGH for a while. You know, everybody gets hurt. Mm -hmm. She was doing for uh, for a while, and uh, you know, she was playing with them. And she, we know her, man, for for years, just because she was before acting. She was just uh, you know, she was a, a a key figure in you know that era of New York hardcore. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, just from shows and always being around, and, you know, as we just knew her from that, you know, mm -hmm. just from that type of, uh, you know, uh, relationship it was through music already. Mm -hmm. And we were trying to get somebody we were looking around. We're like, oh, who can we get, you know, like to do the part, like the rant part on this song. And originally mm -hmm. we were trying to get um, another good friend. We were trying to get uh, Lars from Rancid. Mm. on there you know uh him sure. and uh mike are really really close so we were like oh you know maybe we can squeeze him in but maybe we want someone else that has a good you know banter that has a good you know force behind their voice and everything and she was like the, i mean she was like up there with the ideas and we asked her and she jumped on it in like two seconds it was like fuck yeah I was like, you know let's let's do this and you know she she crushed it Oh, she did. Nope. Yeah, definitely. Yep. Well, well, Ray, Ray, um, Matt mentioned it at the beginning, and I, I wanted to look at it a little bit. You did the two covers. Obviously, the Motorhead one makes the most sense because they're kind of the the hybrid of everything, whether it's thrash or punk or hardcore or anything. They 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 always seem to have that that vibe. But doing a Skid Row cover really seemed like the oddball choice, which it's a, a cool choice, and and I love it. But it. What possessed you to go hair metal with with a cover? Oh, I mean, we're all we're all you know we all have our metal influences. You know, it's like I love I love hair metal. You know, it's yeah. like that's my you know we all do. Like we all sit there, we'll be in the van, like let's say going from show to show to show, and it's like, well, what are we listening to? You know, and first thing that comes, you know, a lot of times we'll throw in, you know, we'll get warrant and we'll get rat and we'll get you know you get poison you get molly crew you get you know, skin row you get all the you know all, all the hits you know and mm -hmm. that's it's it's one of those songs where we were like you know what i was like let's just do this let's just see let's just bang it out and see what happens and it came you know, we did it at a rehearsal and it was awesome and it was like wow i was like that's really funny and mm -hmm. i was like you know what fuck it i was like people wouldn't expect it so, you know, and we have, you know, I, I mean, other, other, uh, like so many bands have covered Iron Fist, you know, from Motorhead, mm -hmm. you know, I think the best cover of that, uh, was done by a uh, ringworm, you know, oh, human yeah. furnace. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I mean, that was the best Iron Fist cover in my opinion, but, um, you know, we loved the song and we were like, yeah, let's do this. And the same thing with, you know, slave to the grind. It's like, you know, this, this is good. This is this is a good you know we can make this tune have a lot of momentum, and uh, and just push through and it worked out. Yeah, and I'm sure you get mistaken for Sebastian Bach all the time, right? <laughs> I mean, it, you know, when when you're this good looking, you know, I mean, it's it's definitely, you know, people think I'm upside down or something, you know, because like uh, you know, when he had the, the the beautiful hair, you know, now it's on my face. So, it's, <laughs> you know, like, but yeah, yeah, oh yeah, I get, I get, you know, mistaken for him all the time. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, 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 Ray, I, I want to go back, you know, six years or so when you joined the band. Um, 
even though Brick by Brick had history before you, it really felt like it really feels like it was a fresh start once you came into the band, almost like it reactivated or, or started new. For you personally, as the guy that came in, did it feel like a brand new band starting over, or did it feel like you were stepping into something that was already a snap? Um, you know, uh, at first, well, how, uh, let me let me give you a little history. Um, it was pretty much um, brick by brick and full blown. We've been playing shows together forever, and uh, you know, from back in when uh, we used to do all the stillborn fests together and just with Haybreed and, and sworn enemy and everybody, all the bigger bands, mm -hmm. God forbid shadows fall and stuff and, and uh, suffocation, you know, we'd have a great time. You know, we always had a really good, um, you know, working relationship as musicians and everything. And uh, we became really good friends with all the guys, you know, all the guys in the band. Anytime we would go and do shows, together you know we shit we'd clear the fucking bar it was fucking wild so um <laughs> coming into the band you know i always told mike i was like hey you know if something happens you need somebody to fill in i was familiar with their music and i was like yeah let me know you know i like to keep active uh you know and i've filled in for bands before you know uh with uh you know tours here and there mm -hmm. and i was like why not so um Mike hits me up. He's like, look, having a problem with our singer. Uh, you know, he sucks, this and that. His wife won't let him do this and that, whatever. They were trying to get, you know, more serious. And the dude was, uh, you know, he was a pair of cement shoes, you know, for them. He just kind of, it, it, was, it, was, it was bad. Wet blankets, you know. Mm -hmm. right. So nobody wants to sleep with a wet blanket. Mm -hmm. So pretty much they had, a, they had a Canadian weekend, like a little run going on. And uh, they asked me, they're like, hey, can you learn the songs? Sure. It was uh, uh, Brick by Brick and Madball. So I was like, all right. So I came, I went up to up to Albany, met up with the guys, had a rehearsal, knocked it out. A few days later, we had the shows. Okay. Um, I pretty much uh, butchered every Brick by Brick song because we were all <laughs> fucking drunk. And, uh, and it was probably some of the best responses the band has overall has ever had wow. and we were you know we had a great time you know it mm -hmm. was like fuck yeah you know and i filled in for a couple of more after that and then finally you know mike was like so uh you want to do this permanently and i was like you know what i'm like full-blown wasn't as active you know full, uh, which you know it's just everybody's got lives everybody's got families kids so mm -hmm. it's i was like yeah you know what i need another project to keep active and as soon as, you know, I, I uh, you know, I pricked my finger and signed, and signed the line in blood there, uh, that was it. You know, and instantly it was like, wow, all right, let's write some music. Let's redo these tunes. And we uh, re-recorded a bunch of the older stuff being that, you know, it, it, it was pretty much defunct or out of press. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't in print anymore. And, and that was it. And just gave, uh, gave the band new life that it deserved from when it began mm -hmm. in the first place. So, you know, cause they were stifled with the way their original singer was, mm -hmm. you know, just not being able to do much. And, you know, he did a lot of fucked up shit. He wouldn't show up for shows, you know, oh, and damn. He, he was, yeah, his wife would tell him not to do it and then he wouldn't do it Jeez. type of stuff. And you can't, mm -hmm. you can't be in a semi successful band with, you know, having uh you know rules like that guard your life it's mm. just not so pretty much uh you know that was it and when we just started we're, we're always writing we're always trying to look for the next uh what's the next step mm -hmm. you know so it, it definitely it, it I, I would say both you know it, it, knowing the guys already and knowing their music it was like it was very familiar but it was also new. It was it's pretty much both, you know, like mm -hmm. a refresh on the band. Mm -hmm. Awesome, man. Yeah, you know, one of the things uh, that's that's obviously about, you know, brick by brick, and it's also one of the reasons why I really dig the band, man, is, like I was saying earlier, man, you were saying to yourself, I mean, you guys love to have a good time, man. It's, it's represented in your, in your music and your videos. Uh, and you guys even had your own, like, it was like a Jack Daniels barrel thing there, I saw, right, where you were selling bottles of 
Jack Daniels with the logo, the brick by brick logo on it. But how'd you guys? How did that happen, man? How'd you guys wind up making oh, that work? Let me tell you, my uh, we've been looking for a, a booze sponsorship, you know, forever. You know, like I had, I had multiple ones with uh, with full blown chaos for a long time. I had my own personal, you know, one for years. And uh, with brick by brick, you know, we we're Jack drinkers. You know, we like to. It's mother's milk. Mike has probably one of the most extensive Jack Daniels collections in uh, in North America. <clears throat> Damn. So, like, I, I'm not kidding. Not kidding. Like, just, uh, you know, like, he has insurance on his collection. Oh, damn. Just <laughs> with, with antique bottles That's and just awesome. memorabilia and everything. And he's a, he's a Tennessee squire for Jack Daniels. That's like a fan club kind of, right? Or, like, whatever uh, it's, it is. It's... It's not a fan club, similar. but it's, it's like, okay. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah. yeah, you're you're a part of their organization. Mm-hmm. You know, you have a plot of their land and stuff. So mm-hmm. it's you know you it's crazy. You know, I mean, uh, I have one of those for uh, Lafroy because I love Scotch. Mm-hmm. So I have okay. a, a piece of their, you know, you get a piece of their land and everything. Mm-hmm. So um, he was hitting up Jack Daniels, and he was like, "Hey, you know, like I want to, you know." get a sponsorship and this and that. And they, they weren't feeling it just yet, mm-hmm. but being a squire through, uh, through Jack, you can, you're entitled to your own barrel mm-hmm. of oh. Jack Daniels and your own blend. Oh, okay. So, you know, we did the math and we were talking about it and you know what, let's fucking do it. You know, like mm-hmm. we went, uh, Mike and, uh, Andy, uh, our bass player, I couldn't get there for the time frame. It just didn't work with my uh, my work schedule. It was before, literally, the whole country shut down. And uh, they went to Lynchburg. They met up with um, all their master distillers, and they tweaked a blend specifically to our liking. And uh, that barrel became the brick by brick barrel. You know, we have, nice. um, and that's the only one that'll ever be made because it's you know it's a, a single barrel whiskey and it's mm-hmm. it's the only one like there's no way to re- to replicate it mm-hmm. you know <laughs> you know because it's not made on such big levels sure yeah so you know and that ended up being our barrel so we put the band stamp on it and we're like this is going to be the brick by brick barrel and we're like hey you know what we want something that'll set us up there with motorhead had one guns and roses mm-hmm. had one you know, not yeah. everybody gets their own Jack Daniels. Sure. We have our own Jack Daniels. Yeah. So, which Something is, awesome, which yeah. is fantastic, you yeah. know, and, um, it's sinfully smooth. It's stronger than regular Jack. You know, it's, mm. it's dangerous. It's really, <laughs> it's really <Sure>. dangerous. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, I mean, we're all drinkers, you know, quarantine has made, uh, everybody drink um, more. Yeah. <laughs> you know they, they they all know of my drinking but they don't know my thirst you know that's pretty much the uh the saying you know it's, uh, it, it you definitely you know you, you tie one on i know a lot of people that have fallen off the deep end during this whole two-month quarantine stuff so mm-hmm. but it you know and it it, it, just, it sucked that it came at the time it did you know but mm-hmm. i'm glad that we have we were um our barrel was the last barrel to roll off roll over their uh uh, for Jack Daniels. Oh, wow. So until they yeah. start, cause they're, they, uh, they switch gears. They're making hand sanitizer right oh, now. To really? help. Yeah. I didn't yep. know that. Wow. Yep. So they, uh, you know, until things level out and then they start, you know, pulling whiskey again. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, our barrel was the last one. That's pretty, wow. That's interesting, man. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. L- last oh, yeah. one, the, it, it was the last, uh, the last tour of the day, the last, uh, sitting with the master distillers, everything was brick by brick. Everything was us. It was just everything was catered to us. And right after that, they shut down. Wow. It was the, so it was, the, it was the last of the brain sanitizers, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I mean, this one, let me tell you, it's um, you know, for my bottle, I'm I'm tempted to keep it, but I'm also tempted to drink it. Yeah, so, I can imagine. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> it might be. I what mean, the do? bottle's not. It, it's not a big bottle, uh-huh. you know. But obviously, but. That might be the, uh, you know, for as long as I'm alive, you know, I'll take a shot for my birthday every year, you know, until it's gone. Until it's gone, yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you got to nurture that thing and uh, do it in small, small doses so it lasts longer, right? I mean, like I said, you're oh, not, yeah. not going to get another bottle of that, so you have to kind of, 
you know, like you were saying, uh, choose wisely your, you know, how you drink it. Yeah, but, it was uh, only uh, one barrel does uh, 225 bottles. Wow. Uh, okay. So and so that's all there is, and we got the barrel. You know, like the whole barrel they they sent us. They sent us the an engraved barrel top mm-hmm. and everything, like just for for yeah, I saw uh, that. We get a, yeah, yeah, we get a and we get a plaque in their in Jack Daniel's museum. Oh fuck yeah, nice. as well. Yeah, which that's is awesome, pretty man. cool. That's real awesome. Well, yeah. Speaking of drinking, man. I mean, you know, from uh, my experiences, you know, growing up. In the New York hardcore scene in the 90s, man, there was always those two factions, right? In the scene, you had the parties and you had the street edge, you know? And then, you know, back then, there wasn't... I, I, just from my experience, I remember there wasn't much tolerance on either side for whatever reason, you know? They were kind of split, you know? You, I mean, you could trace that back to the 80s, too. It was like that, you know? It's been going on for a while, but... Uh, and I've been out here on the West Coast now for a while, and there's not much of a really a hardcore scene in the, the Bay Area. It's very small, but I was just wondering, man, like, you know, does that, is that still kind of... Is there that kind of disconnect still that goes on with the younger generation of hardcore fans, or is it kind of more accepted than it was more so than it was in the past? I mean, these days it's it's definitely more accepted. I mean, it's there's always going to be cliques and factions mm-hmm. of you know as as much as there are the genres now mm-hmm. of heavy music. True. Yeah. So it's you know like how it used to be with. You know, like metal kids and punk kids, you know, they always used to be at each other, you know, when you have the partiers and you have the straight edge, mm-hmm. you know, and, and the straight edge kids, you know, shit, we need straight edge kids, sure. you know, because mm-hmm. they're the ones that, you know, they'll, hey, they, they help, uh, you know, when we get out of control, mm-hmm. they kind of keep its own for us, mm-hmm. you know, and everybody's got their, you know, it's an even balance, mm-hmm. you know, for, for every, one that parties the way I do, there's a militant straight edge on the other side, you know, mm-hmm. that, which is, which is good because you, you need that. And, you know, not for nothing. Um, there was some really good music that came out of that, you know, oh, sure, yeah. you know, out of bands that were mm-hmm. all straight edge, you know, and that was, so it was great. You know, it was, it was a good thing because it, it didn't, it added flavor to that heavy mix. Mm-hmm. So it's always, you know, and now it don't matter now. Now mm-hmm. it's like nobody fucking cares. You know, oh, you're straight edge. Cool. How old are you? That's the first thing I ask <laughs> is, you know, because yeah. you're not straight edge. You're underage. Exactly. Yeah, wait, you go. You yeah. Know, <laughs> when you can make it, a, when you can make it your choice to not drink mm-hmm. and not party and not, you know, if you go by, you know, how, uh, you know, the minor threat rule, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's your, you know, that's cool. You know, I'm glad that there are people that pick that pure existence. Mm. You know, that's awesome. You yeah. know, like uh, there are times where, you know, shit, I spent two years not drinking, mm-hmm. you know, not drinking. And then I turned three years old and I was like, fuck this. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, but uh, it's, you know, it's not for everybody. Sure. So it works. Mm. No yeah. doubt, man. Well, well, Ray, you mentioned the different genres, and it leads me to at least a thought. You know, hardcore as a genre has always stayed underground, you know, and it has baffled my mind, at least through the 90s especially, that you know, what, I'll, what I'll say were lesser musical styles, your rap metal, your new metal, that type of stuff, raised so quickly from nothing to be in the public eye and yet hardcore never even had the same kind of a rise up like like even a thrash metal did why do you think it is that that especially metal people never gravitated toward taking hardcore more into the mainstream well i mean here here's the thing you know anything that's hardcore when you put the label hardcore on it you know back you go back 30 40 years you know what was hardcore you know Hardcore was the extreme of anything, you know. So there was a lot of punk that was pretty damn hardcore. There was a lot of, you know, just rude boy, you know, style of of reggae and that tone that was, wow, that has a hardcore vibe. You know, it's more than just a sound. It's a feeling. It's a it's a movement. You know, it's 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 not just, oh, that's hardcore. Well, you know what? Hardcore has multiple, multiple meanings. And it, you know, there are bands that like, um, for instance, uh, Agnostic Front, you know, Mm -hmm. 
one of my absolute favorites, you know, just toured with them forever, know them forever. Um, they, you know, they are hardcore, you know, they are, they are the full embodiment and, uh, you know, they always have been, but, you know, and you can go anywhere in the world and they're still, you know, they're, they'll pull out those kids. They'll pull out those people, new, young, old, you know, venerable. It, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. You know, they have that, they, they pull it out, but it doesn't, you know, it, it's one of those things where it's socially acceptable. You know, there's a majority that is going to be plain Jane. All they want is radio friendly stuff because they don't want to open themselves up to an extreme, you know, any type of extremity and any type of like extreme lifestyle. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, there have been bands that have crossed over that helped usher in more stuff into mainstream. Like, uh, you know, one of the number one bands out there that needs to be credited for that is Haybreed. Sure. Haybreed, mm-hmm. let me tell you, they just literally kicked the door open and kept his foot there mm-hmm. for a lot of us to run in. Sure. You know, it's mm-hmm. like, you know, we started playing heavy music and you you have your hardcore influences, you have your metal influences and you have a crossover sound where you can appeal to multi-genre factions. So, you know, they, you know, personally, you could put them with anybody. Mm-hmm. You could put them on any tour and it would be successful mm-hmm. and, and, and successful for the band because they had that hardcore mentality where it's like you know we're gonna take whatever's there we're gonna take even if it's not there and you know that's that's the whole thing it's and we're gonna give you 100 percent. we're gonna take even more and that's it Mm -hmm. and they you know they ushered it that all that in they held the door open for a lot of bands Mm -hmm. and that's you know bands that are huge right now that you know i mean hapri has been going over 20 years Mm -hmm. and You know, bands that are packing out arenas right now, you know, whether they say it or not, you know, that's where that started. They helped, you know, like, and, you know, before Haybreed, there was Agnostic Front. There was Sick of It All. There were these bands that, you know, that took it to the next level so other bands could take it to the next level. Mm -hmm. And then those bands take it, you know, then everybody could keep getting, you know, once you... You get in the door. All right. Where's the next fucking door? Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. where's the next one? Let's beat it down and try to hold it open as long as we can for the next wave to come in. Mm-hmm. You know, as long as we don't hit uh, a terrible grunge phase again, then, um, you know, we'll be OK. Yeah. So that's I mean, like grunge had a lot of great, great bands, you know, but they also had so much garbage music. Sure. That's, uh, you know, so yeah. hopefully, you know, and with hardcore, you really don't, there really isn't, you know, there's bad bands and there's good bands, but the message is still solid. Mm-hmm. Sure. So, but, but you, you know what? I'm going to play devil's advocate on what you just said, though, because, yeah, I, and I agree with you a thousand percent. Hatebreed definitely opened the door and made, made it much more acceptable to be a hardcore fan or to listen to hardcore. Mm hmm. Unlike other movements, nobody seemed to grab the, the, you know, grab the rope and pull. You know, I mean, if you go like to Thrash, you obviously had Metallica, and then that immediately spawned your Megadeth, Anthrax, Exodus, Testament, etc. With hardcore, you had you had a couple of times in the eighties and nineties when it almost happened. Whether it was Hatebreed or, you know, if you go back to even like Biohazard, you know. Yep. Mm-hmm. Those bands seem like they started to open something, but there was not a wave of bands to pick it up and move it forward. And that's what I've never understood because hardcore, you know, I, I love hardcore music and I love a bunch of bands that you would probably know and Matt would probably know. And most people would look at me like I'm stupid because they must, the, I must listen to nothing but local bands, you know, bands like Blood for Blood as an example. Yeah, yeah. Band, mm-hmm. I love, mm-hmm. band I love to death and you say mm-hmm. it to any, any common listener, they don't know. And it's like, how could you miss that? But yet you own five hate breed records. Mm-hmm. Well, that's, uh, you know, a lot of that, too, is that like they'll know they just it might just be their um, their preference to 
not listen to stuff like that. Like, um, you know, I, I loved, you know, I, I still love Blood for Blood, you know? You know, I mean, just all the, you know, a lot of good music came out from that, you know, from you have what, uh, between like Slapshot, you know, Blood for Blood, it, it's it always had that, you know, they, they opened, you know, I, it's it's hard to really describe I, I don't know i don't know why a lot of people maybe they were just pacified with having that you mm -hmm. know they didn't want to go past maybe it was just too good for them to want to listen to other things you know like there's still i have my favorite albums that i'll go to but i still listen to new music there's a lot of people that don't listen to new music at all right. or will reach out to other bands and go through they'll like one or two songs but they won't listen to the whole album they won't go through their discography mm -hmm. you know they won't check out like oh shit there's all these extra you know there's all these things and it's you know what do you do it's like do you listen i i personally if i like a band i'm gonna listen to everything they have mm -hmm. just to see their progression sure. see what you know what what maybe maybe try to pick out what influenced them on that album, you know, look for things that, you know, just different, uh, you know, ideals at the time or messages. And, uh, you know, people in general are awful and they don't, uh, you know, in my opinion, I'm not a big fan of humanity at all, but it's, you know, there's, uh, it's, there's a lot of good, like new England bands that like kill switch, kill switch, kick the fucking door open. Like nobody's business. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's, and, you know, you have that. Like, there was always a big, b bands that started that had a hardcore influence that ended up trailing off and being a little more metal. You know, All That Remains, Shadows Fall, mm -hmm. God Forbid, Lamb of God. You know, there was all, you know, a lot of their stuff is more metallic or in some cases more radio-friendly metallic. But that's because, but even the radio-friendly stuff now is heavier Right, mm -hmm. because of those bands that kind of ushered in that influence and made it a little more acceptable through the you know general uh, population. Mm -hmm. Sure. Well, I'm yeah. going to rate just by mentioning God forbid you just became my favorite guest ever. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Let me tell you, I, they man, I one of uh, the first time I saw God forbid. It was at uh, Middlesex County College in New Jersey, and there was a whole fest, and it was it was a uh, God forbid, sick of it all, Ensign, Candiria, um, so many fucking awesome bands, and uh, it was it was wild, you know. Mm -hmm. I I left there with with a fractured arm and just you know mm -hmm. it was <laughs> I mean it was crazy, and that was from a collision I had with a. Uh, with Pat from, uh, he was playing with, um, uh, oh shit, what the fuck? Who was he playing with? You know, he played with, oh my God, I'm having a, a brain fart right now on, uh, um, well, he plays with Fit for an Autopsy now. Okay. You know, that's, mm -hmm. that was his new, his new baby. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, there were multiple bands he was in at the time. And, you know, besides, you know, that whole Shattered Realm crew back mm -hmm. in the day, Red Line, you know, you know New Jersey Bloodline, you mm -hmm. know, all these great bands that came from that era and you know everybody would come out everybody would come out and play and it was you know and we had you know man fun time just beating that shit out of each other in these you know in these pits and god forbid was definitely they were one of those bands that was like wow look at this shit you know <laughs> yeah. and you wouldn't you wouldn't have thought you know that like wow okay and then you know knowing the guys forever did multiple tours with them Sure. multiple big festivals with them you know we had a, we have a lot of history and they're they're fantastic you know like all their stuff i wish they would you know repeak and do stuff mm -hmm. you know like they but everybody does their own things you know right now everybody's doing you know uh byron lives he's in, he's a, a texan now too he's right. over in el paso wow. and uh you know doc's doing in, incredibly well doing wolves, stuff right? with uh yeah with bad yeah. wolves you know, and that's got multiple people from other hardcore bands, you know? Right. So mm -hmm. it's, you know, I mean, with, with shit, I remember, you know, Tommy, when he was pushing his vexed 
cassettes just trying to get you know people to listen you know his, his demos like hey listen to this i knew him when he was a kid you know just from from the the hardcore scene going to shows wow. so it's just always you know you never know who's you know who's gonna be you know the next big thing they're huge right now mm-hmm. yeah. huge huge yeah, yeah. No doubt. Yeah, so I mean, I can't have you on here without, of course, talking about full blown chaos. Um, what uh, are you? Are you guys? Is it, you guys? Are you on a hiatus right now, or what's going on? Are you? Are you guys done, or what's going on? Full blown chaos. Is there? No, a, I mean, we no? took you know, we we took a lot of time off just because of family stuff and just personal and just you know kids this and that. People got married and whatever. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're still we we have a, a ton of written music. Mm-hmm. We're just waiting to just tie it together and track it out. Um, it just, you know, after, you know, the last record metal blade kind of dropped the ball on, you know, ironclad was pushing as hard as they could for mm-hmm. us. Uh, that's Trevor Phipps from Unearth, mm-hmm. his, uh, his label. And he had a lot of inner workings with metal blade and they were distributing and processing a lot of, uh, the bands on the label for him. And, uh, Metal Blade kind of shelved it. It was just, it was a, a rough time. And we, uh, you know, touring was getting more difficult. Filling rooms was getting more difficult. And, uh, you know, I mean, Europe is a whole different animal. Overseas is a whole different animal. Here, you know, it was just so watered down that, you know, you had to, you could pick and choose to go to whichever show you wanted, you know, on on any given night Mm -hmm. where it's, you know, so it it was, uh, it was difficult to keep active and, uh, you know, everybody ended up doing their own thing. And, uh, you know, we still, you know, we still do shows from here to there. We had a bunch of stuff planned in Europe for this summer. We had festivals and everything. And that all took a wash because of, uh, you know, the way of the world right now, Mm -hmm. unfortunately, but, uh, you know, things will get rescheduled. And uh, but now there's you know there's new music, oh, nice. there's new stuff. You know uh, it's we just had to wait for it, you know wait for that wave to come back around. Sure. You know mm-hmm. it's just there's I mean there's people in you know successful big bands right now that you know I'll talk to and they're like man, Full Blown was such an influence for me. Mm-hmm. You know and like doing this and I'm like fuck yeah you know I'm I'm that if that doesn't give you a purpose, you know to to exist then i don't know what does that you were able to touch somebody in a way to influence them into success yeah and that's i mean that's awesome you mm-hmm. know that's i'm really glad you know there's definitely you know we never stop writing i have multiple notebooks you know like mm-hmm. full of music ideas lyrics you know i got one for brick by brick and i have one for full blown i don't you know i don't cannibalize each other's ideas you know to i keep everything uh very separated and esoteric but um yeah we were supposed to have some stuff out uh and recorded already but uh just because of covid19 and everything it's put on hold so mm-hmm. you know we're talking with a couple of different labels that are interested um i would love for our stuff to go i mean our label home for brick by brick right now is uh, upstate records mm-hmm. and they are man let me tell you they have their ear to the ground they do so much for their bands i would sure. love to be able to to put something out with full blown on on their label just because of they love the music so much and they love the musicians mm-hmm. that's their concern it's not financial it's a family yes yeah no yeah we you know yeah we had uh mario on uh you know our first episode here and uh yeah i mean what a, what a genuine guy man what a just a down-to-earth real guy both him and, and kim man they're just I, I agree man they're doing a great job i mean just in a couple of years you know they're definitely one of the biggest hardcore labels here in the states i mean the only ones i could think of that may you know uh are about the same level as them is maybe like a bridge nine or eulogy you know what i mean but they're yeah. um you know they're they're doing fantastic I, mean, I agree and yeah i love what they're doing with the whole family uh you know philosophy and everything i think it's fantastic yeah yeah and that's uh, you know it's a great it's a great way to it's a great business model first off sure. mm-hmm. the way because they're not looking they're just looking to you know hey if we recoup it we recoup it but you know they're realistic mm-hmm. and uh you know they're great they definitely mm-hmm. 
they they care about what they do and what they're doing for others. Mm-hmm. So it's it's not them first, you know. And mm-hmm. for a label, you know, there were other labels that put you first. That you know, like um, uh, Full Blown was. Uh, we did an album with Ferret, mm-hmm. and Ferret was amazing. Like they were just a really amazing label to be with, mm-hmm. and they were very, you know, and they had great values, you know. And at the time, like they had Madball, they had uh, uh, they had In Flames. The same, uh, the same time that we were on with them, and uh, they put out really great music. They were a staple for such a long time. Mm-hmm. So it's, uh, you know, but it, just like, you know, there's a lot of other labels. You know, new labels start, other labels fade away, mm-hmm. and I think, uh, I think Upstate's going to be there for a long time. I agree. Yeah, definitely. Well, yeah. Uh, well, Ray, you, you, um. You mentioned many times during this interview about, you know, going out playing shows and shows that have been canceled and whatnot. And certainly live shows is the is the pulse of hardcore music. If you're not doing shows, you're not really a hardcore band. Is usually the way it works. With with the pandemic, with everybody's vision of life in general being changed, is that gonna change how you play shows and how you interact and what you expect to see with crowds and everything? Um, I really hope not. I hope I, what I, what I hope is that, I mean, first off this whole thing with everybody being, you know, just secluded from each other and having social distancing and this and that, yeah, having stay at home orders. Um, there's definitely going to be an influx of great music. You know, you have to, there people are home writing. There's going to be a lot of great music coming out from this. Mm-hmm. But um, the live performances, you know, they're talking about I saw an article about uh, them just doing like a theater style. Nobody wants to fucking sit down. Nice. Half of the, you know, you know, I no, mean, yeah. yeah, there's some shows when I went to go see Pink Floyd. I wanted to sit down. OK, that's cool. You know, but, um, <clears throat> you know, there's I'm, I'm the guy that, oh, I got seats. OK, I'm going to make my way down the fucking general admission or I'm going to be somewhere on the fucking stage. You know, it's like, Mm -hmm. that's the, it's, I really hope it doesn't change because we're not going to change it. I'm, you know, once uh, things even out and stuff, I might, uh, might be a little weary because I do have a terrible habit of spitting while I'm playing, you know, it's like (laughs) handing the mic out for people to sing along, Mm -hmm. you know, like, how are you going to portray that without, having, you know, germ transfer and this mm-hmm. and that, you know, it, it's difficult. Sure. It's difficult to, I don't want to change how I do things for, you know, because of sanitary, you know, uh, you know, basic germ related reasons, you know, it's, sure. it sucks. Mm. It sucks, you know, cause it's, uh, I don't know. I don't know how, uh, how that will really change. You know, this is the, Longest, like I said, this is the longest I've been in one place in forever, just between work and band Mm -hmm. and just traveling for both. And, uh, you know, being here and going up to New York all the time for shows and, you know, and for uh, rehearsals and studio and everything, you know, I commute, I commute for the band, you know, and it's, Mm -hmm. I, you know, there's a lot of people that won't do that in their own state because they don't have a love for it as much as I do. You know, it's, Mm -hmm. you know, I need music, you know, sure, I could start a project here, but. You know, I'll go where the music is. It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. And uh, that type of mentality will hopefully, you know, will be infected. You know, will be, you know, I want that to be contagious, mm-hmm. that people are willing to still support and, uh, you know, push their bands, push their music, you know, and still have a fan base, a live fan base, that people that will come. They were talking about doing, oh, well, we could... uh you know, live stream this and that. It's not the fucking same. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. not the same. Yeah, it's, you know, it's yeah, totally. it's yeah. like, I mean, when you play to an empty room, you're still you still have that. I love this music, and I'm going to give it a hundred percent. But when you're playing to a crowd, and you're getting it's a catharsis. You're getting mm-hmm. that energy back. It just fuels the fire even more. Mm-hmm. So it's you know you need a crowd. Yeah. You need a crowd. Yeah. You know, I like performing for me. First off, you know, it's a good, uh, 
you know, I'm able to vent and everything. And it's, it's just, uh, you know, I really hope, you know, for, for everybody's sake in our scene and for, for heavy music in general, um, you know, this doesn't, uh, take a huge hit to where people are going to have to, you know, stand, uh, you know, you can't crowd kill if everybody's six feet apart. So yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> exactly. you know, I mean, that's, yeah. I, you know, I've been guilty of that myself. You know, I just, I get stuck in the moment and mm. then, uh, I'm smashing everybody to fucking pieces. So, yeah, yeah. you know, it, it's one of those things. It's like, you can't, you know, how are you going to get a pick going? How are you going to do this? How are you going to, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a, a worrisome thing, mm -hmm. you know, cause that's a, the, a lot of people take that physical aspect of the music home with them. And that's how they, you know, that's what creates their memories with the band. It's not just the music on its own. It's the performance. Sure. It's, you know, like there, there are bands that I've never seen live that once I, you know, that I didn't see. And once I got to see them live, I was able to tie that great memory with, you know what? I love this band even more. Mm -hmm. There's a band called, uh, get the shot. They are incredible. You know, it's like, Holy hell. And then, didn't see them live saw them live and was like sold i was like this is amazing mm -hmm. you know and that's you know and that's a lot of a, a lot of how music needs to be so yeah. we'll see yeah. you know we'll see how it uh, how it all comes out yeah no totally and just one last question man you know uh you guys you know brick by brick i what i've heard is that you guys already got another album written from what i've heard is that true and, and uh are you guys planning on releasing that maybe sometime next year or something uh yeah it's uh <clears throat> we're probably depending on what happens with everything you know with uh certain states being locked down and things going um we will record hopefully sometime uh either later this summer or get things tracked get things going like we have a bunch of material already ideas you know pretty like skeletons of the songs done mm -hmm. and it's just getting them uh getting them together so hopefully hopefully we uh you know we'll have it out you know for that that's our goal is to have a uh 2020 uh 2021 sorry uh release, release. Okay. like sometime like early uh early spring late winter so this way to catch that uh summer wave that we uh we lost this year sure okay Gotcha. Yeah. Well, cool, man. Well, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, Hive Mentality, it's out now on Upstate Records, uh, Brick by Brick. Man, Ray, thanks so much for coming on. As uh, in tradition, what we do here is we play a song off, uh, you know, the record to end things. Go ahead and pick a song that you want the uh, audience to hear. Oh, bars open. Bars obviously. open. Perfect. Oh, all yeah. Right. Man, that's, <laughs> that's uh, yeah, that's got to be my favorite on the island. Mean, I love all the songs, but sure. bars open has that. That, and I, I love the. Uh, you know, the Motorhead cover, Iron Fist, is mm -hmm. just, it's got a lot of energy, too. Yeah. So, it's, yeah. yep. Awesome. All right. Well, bar is open. Here it is. All right, Ray. Thanks a lot, man. Have a, have a good one, mate. Stay safe, and uh, thanks again for coming on. We appreciate it. All right. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. All right, bud. Take care, man. All right. Bye-bye.
Thanks for listening to Aftershocks. For more episodes, go to our website at www.aftershockspodcast.com. Visit us on our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter pages for more news and information on the podcast. And be sure to subscribe, listen to, and review all episodes on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and all other podcast platforms. For your music listening pleasure, visit our website or go to www.shockwavesradio.com for all comments and questions Please email us at info at aftershockspodcast.com. <laughs>